Hello everybody, welcome back to Game Over Cancer. I'm sorry about the, the delay that we had. We had a few technical um, uh, issues, but we are back. And I am Mal Kreos. I will be host for the next couple of hours. Uh, but I will uh, not waste any more time. We currently have a Super Metroid rotation randomizer. If you haven't heard of it, you are not the only one. It is going to be very new to me. But thankfully, we have Squidman and Lord Nuke here to do the uh, commentary. Uh, so take it away. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Squidman, and I will be uh, joined here by uh, Nuke. I'm Lord Nuke, of course. You probably heard my voice a lot over the course of the last couple of days. I'm in. I'm on uh, Twitch as this is me underscore gaming. And I freaking love Super Metroid. Yeah, Super Metroid is such a great and versatile game. Um, it, it just shows in just how great the randomizer for this is and how you we can um, you know break this game by rotating it and then making another randomizer for it. So yeah, this is going to be a treat. Um, maybe uh, the first time a lot of these folks are going to be seeing uh, the rotation hack. First time I'm seeing it, so I'm excited to see what this brings to the table. Yep. So our uh, our participants have uh, uh, just started the countdown, so we're gonna be getting going real soon. Japanese text. All right, and uh, we are starting. Um, so our runners today are uh, Daggett, uh, Rusty, and Juni. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about this is, uh, obviously, everything's been rotated uh, clockwise by 90 degrees. So the ship is just, you know, kind of floating here. Oh my god. Now I now I understand what a rotation run is. This is kind of incredible. <laughs> I've also yes. dropped a quick exclamation R in the in the Twitch chat for this. Go ahead and give each of these runners a follow. So yeah, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, version of Super Metroid here uh, was uh, um, is a randomizer created from a hack that uh, was released back in 2016. Um, you can find that on Metroid Construction. Um, it, it does rotate everything by 90 degrees, and for the most part, the rooms are the same. There are some minor tweaks uh, that have uh, been made to uh, the, um, uh, the game to make it a little bit uh, more viable for actually running. Um, uh, we'll go into some of those a little bit later. Uh, things like uh, water physics have been tweaked a little bit. Um, some blocks have been changed from, for example, uh, bomb blocks to crumble blocks, or power bomb blocks, uh, or super blocks, things like that. Um, you'll notice in some of the sections, like, for example, shock gates have been, like, removed. Uh, this is just uh, to make the game actually, like, you know, uh, runnable, and it does actually open up a lot of different paths. Um, so yeah, our uh, our runners are just uh, kind of starting off by uh, uh, going down here into uh, to Prince Star. Uh, normal normal kind of a progression uh, for a rando, but you know rotated. Well, yes. I see Iron Rusty and Junie June are basically on top of each other right now, but I also see the Daggett playing a pretty quick catch up actually. Yeah, um, <laughs> you will also notice uh, in this um, that uh, uh, because everything is rotated by 90 degrees, you're going to see a lot of wall jumping. I mean, a, a lot, a lot of wall jumping. There's, there's just, it's just, if you're not an expert at wall jumping, by the time you're done playing this hack, you are an expert at wall jumping. <laughs> I never could pull off a wall jump when I was a kid playing this, so I need to get this hack so I can practice that and get good. Well, this is the hack for you then. So yeah, uh, a little bit more on the hack. Uh, this uh, hack was actually, um, well, sorry, the um, the rotation rando actually uh, was um, developed by uh, Strat and uh, Rusty. Uh, these folks, these two folks, have been working on this uh, for a little while, and, and 
uh, basically it, it uses the I, I believe it uses a, a the um, uh, kind of default Super Metroid randomizer and then it takes that and applies uh, the settings to um, the rotation rando. So trying my hardest not to just bust out laughing every time they get on one of those elevators and go sideways. <laughs> yes. So you'll see that these folks are running through this room that uh, used to be the escape climb. Um, Daggett now lovingly calls this a track and field because uh, all of the all of the platforms have now become hurdles. Uh, so you'll see a lot of those kind of interesting changes. Uh, you know, a room that you thought was easy is uh, you know completely unexpected now. in a decent little bit of a lead right now. But, uh, that's what, maybe a second lead? A second and a half by the looks of it? Yeah, of course when it comes to randomizer, it's really going to be yeah. difficult to tell who's in the lead and who's not in the lead. People are going to diverge uh, from paths, yeah. uh, likely. And that's the thing about Super Metroid. You could do a lot of sequence breaking even just in the, in the original game. So with a randomizer, the right item get could make a real divergence in paths. Yes, for sure. They all do seem to be following this uh, typical uh, starting path, though. There's only a few places that you can really go without, uh, say, Morph Ball and um, Missiles. <laughs> so uh, the beginning of this usually ends up being pretty similar. And oh, wow, a nice early screw attack. Um, yeah, that allows them uh, to pro progress through um, the blocks uh, in the room prior so they can uh, move towards um, uh, Brinstar. Definitely going to help with some enemy takedown and uh, group mobs, that sort of thing as well. And you can just see how much wall jumping there really is in this game. Um, you know, you're seeing these folks wall jump their way back up from Bomb Turismo and then wall jump their way uh, up through Terminator, uh, this this room called Terminator, which is a little bit interesting now because of the slopes, uh, how the slopes change <laughs> uh, your um, uh, ability to walk up this. To uh, complement the early screw attack, we got some early donations as well. Uh, we got a $20 US donation from the Crane OP, and we also got a $5 US donation from Polar Bear Bunny, who says, Donate me. So here's one of the instances of a room change. Um, you can see right here that Juni and Rusty are currently going uh, kind of backwards through Gauntlet to grab the two items here. Um, these are no longer uh, crumble blocks, uh, they're just shop blocks, so they're able to just kind of go right through. It always makes me uh, laugh at the enemy placements in uh, in, in the uh, rotation rando or the rotation hack in general, um, because it's all rotated and the enemy placements are you know in the same spot. You get kind of some strange, some strange like enemies showing up and or enemies showing up in strange places. Um, yeah, keep an eye on that. It's a, it's a fun time. Just so incredibly trippy to watch. It's. Like, I, I know Super Metroid recently. I mean, I don't know half the stuff that we just saw on that previous run. I learned a lot about this game from that previous run. But the layout of the maps and all that? And this is throwing my childhood nostalgia for a real loop right now. Oh, yeah. I highly recommend uh, playing the original hack first. Like I said, it's on Metro Construction. Um, uh, pretty easy to find. Released in 2016. I'm going to give that a playthrough. That looks so fun. So you can see on uh, uh, Rusty Juni and Daggett's screen, they're all going to what is uh, known as early supers. Um, they just have to fall uh, down this uh, nice little uh, shaft. Um, you don't need speed booster or mock balls or anything of the sort to get to this now. Um, uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> We really don't really need a um, speed booster for a lot of things in this. There's only maybe a handful of things speed boosters is actually use, useful for in this hack. Um, uh, because of the nature of the rotation, there's not really a lot of places you can really do speed booster type things. So a lot of times it's just a curse to get speed booster. <laughs> you have to get really good at quick boost and then where are you going to use it? 
Yeah, there's almost no places that use speed booster. Um, I'll point out a place when we get to um, um, into Meridia, uh, but other than that, there's not really a whole lot of places to use speed booster in this hack. Um, yeah, you, you see, you see right now, Daggett uh, and the other runners having to struggle um, to get into this one tile hole, uh, which normally you would just fall down through, but. Um, uh, now that uh, we've been rotated, uh, you kind of have to jump and morph into. And then there's these waivers that really get in your way. It's it's great. This is a great room. This is actually probably one of the first rooms that really, um, I would say, blocks uh, runners of this of this hack. Uh, it's just really difficult to get out of this room if you're not experienced with um, jumping and morphing in the air um, Red very well. Needle. Exactly. a massive massive step up from the original metroid game which still holds up well as a classic but just the maneuverability the improved visuals the whole the whole new interface for equipping and unequipping just the way it all looks and the way it all handles it feels like an entirely different game and, and I think it really is a testament to the game that uh, we're able to hack it like this and still makes for an excellent game. So here's one of the uses of Speed Booster you're seeing on Daggett's screen right now. Um, if you've got it early, you can Speed Booster right up uh, some of these shafts. Um, there's there's another uh, shaft back uh, down in Waterways uh, that uh, you can use Speed Booster in. Um, but yeah, the, the uses are fairly limited. Ah, and on Junior's screen, we've got Spazer, the best weapon in the game. That is real early don't, for that. Don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> See, some of the commentary on the last stream about Plasma being better than Spacer makes a bit more sense now. Oh, well, that commentary is wrong. One of the uh, fun things about uh, the rotation rando is that there are a lot of instances in this where you're just falling down long shafts, which normally in the vanilla game or vanilla rando, you would be running down. Um, <laughs> so doing moonfalls down these shafts can lead to some interesting things like flipping right through blocks or right through door shells. Um, we might see an instance of that uh, coming up maybe fairly soon with uh, uh, Craig. Um, the, the runners may try to do this clip where they, they moonfall down the shaft to Kraid and then they will moonfall through uh, the door to Kraid and be going so fast they will actually go right through the locked door uh, to get um, uh, the item that would normally be Varia. Um, so <laughs> well, I, I'm really hoping we see that. It's a, it's a really fun trick. Also interested to see what is going to be in that spot instead of the Varia. Love randomizers. We have nothing too special here uh, in in uh, in Brinstar. Uh, we're just kind of going through the the um, the motions here, getting all the items uh, in. Uh, uh, past spore. Um, we should not see. I don't think we should see a spore fight in this. Uh, there's not not really a reason to. Uh, we can just skip right past spore. Yeah, I mean the planet exploding will take out spore eventually anyway. Here's a nice example of a, a funny enemy spawn. These these pipes that would normally have spawned enemies coming up, uh, where normally it's a good way to farm are now kind of spawning them sideways and they kind of start in the wall somewhere. So instead of being a good place to farm, it's now actually just a nuisance. Face yeah, jump. So our, okay. So a little bit of uh, more details about the logic. Um, there, this, the logic for this uh, randomizer is uh, the casual setting, meaning that we're not going to see... Um, Varia in Lower Norfair. We're not going to see uh, gravity in um, uh, Meridia, or, or yeah, Meridia, or well, it could be in Wreckship, but not in Meridia for sure. Uh, and um, you're gonna, it's you're gonna have like space jump screw attack required for Lower Norfair as well. And we'll get to that when we get to Lower Norfair. There's some some interesting changes uh, because of the, uh, the the fact that it's rotated. 
It's a good thing they've got space jump and screw attack then. Really early on gives them a lot of maneuverability options. Yeah, a lot of maneuverability, um, a lot of protection uh, going through these uh, enemies, but uh, we'll see how that turns out when uh, they, <laughs> they get to some of the more uh, interesting parts in Lower North Fair. Good to see the first rotated boss fight. I mean, aside from the fake out statue guy. Yeah, so here on, on uh, Rusty's screen, you're seeing uh, the other use, the other one of the other few uses of um, Speed Booster. Uh, you have to actually uh, Shine Spark up the shaft in order to get the item uh, at the top here. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, it's it, basically you, you will you will not be able to uh, uh, charge short charge or anything on uh, this little platform that is now the floor. So you have to uh, charge up uh, before that, um, and then um, shine spark right up through. And it does look like all of our runners are pretty much doing these same checks here. So pretty typical for uh, you know these runners. To, um, there's there's kind of optimal ways to go through a randomizer, so not surprising here. Interesting to watch. I mean, Met Metroid is definitely a game where things can branch off, but... Uh, no, Oh, high jump boots! That's a good get. Just saw that there on Iron Rusty's screen. Yeah, high jump is another item that is going to be required by the casual logic here um, before going into places like uh, Lone Warfare. So, yeah, not surprised. And, and if you see Rusty, he just moonfalled. <laughs> uh, or moonfell, I don't know. Uh, through that, uh, I, I thought he might make that, um, that second door there, but didn't quite. This is so cool to see this. Like it's it's really impressive seeing their skills, all three of them, in handling this flipped environment and getting where they got to go, not knowing what key items they're going to be getting, but just like pulling off maneuvers that I could never pull off when I played the heck out of this game. So you'll see on uh, on Daggett's screen, uh, because the other folks have kind of already gotten through it, um, this is one of the areas where there's a lot of water, you've got no suits, but you can still kind of go up it uh, because the water physics have been changed in this hack. Um, they are slightly changed to make it so that you can actually progress in some areas. Uh, normally you would not really be able to uh, um, go up up the shaft here like this because the uh, water would um, kind of prevent you from gaining any height. Um, I believe they're by the community, these kind of jumps under uh, in water without a suit are called uwus. But um, in <laughs> in this hack, uh, it, it, you can actually gain a, a certain amount of height every time uh, without a suit, without a uh, gravity. They're called uwus. Yeah, the community calls these like little underwater jumps where you're going back and forth uh, between two um, between two uh, uh, walls, basically underwater without a suit and, and uwu. First to pull it off, just like. What's this? Oh, I might be corrected in chat here. Specifically, a single wall underwater drop. Well, I guess, you know, I'm just a bad company. Okay, that's actually cool stuff to learn, though. I like that. An oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so our runners are pretty geared out right now. They've got a uh, um, screw tack, space jump, um, high jump boots, and uh, yeah, a beam upgrade. Beeline for the end game. I mean, they have got some good stuff right now. Especially for, what, 17 minutes into the game? Yeah, it's... It, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's that's casual logic for you. Um, but yeah, you can see you can see some of these some of these rooms have been changed that make them pretty trivial. Um, uh, Rusty and Junie just went uh, up the um, the shaft for the escape item. Basically, uh, uh, Daggett, you're seeing is doing that right now. All you got to do is run down this <laughs> this little corridor now. 
going through those space pirates' minds. When, when they're sitting here in this sideways world, and Samus just comes Kool-Aid manning through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see uh, how difficult these rooms can be uh, if you didn't have space jump. Um, they're still pretty difficult. You have to kind of jump up, open the door, and then fall back down, and then continue <laughs> by jumping back up <laughs> through the open door. So there's a lot of um, minor backtracks in this hack, uh, which which can be a little frustrating. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said at the beginning of this race, um, you definitely will be an expert at wall jumping uh, when you are done. <laughs> All the incentive I need right there. I mean, the rest of this looks fun as heck, and I would do it for the interesting aspects of it, but just to get good at something that always stumped me as a kid, Crystal Flash being the other move I could never make. All right, Rossi picking up Wave Beam, Moat. So Daggett is uh, checking um, uh, Criteria Power Bombs. Um, it looks like Rusty and uh, Junie are going down the moat. Um, it's kind of uh, interesting. If you don't, if you go to wreck ship without having gravity, there is a chance that um, you could get like not soft locked, but it would be very difficult to get out there uh, because of the rotation. The water level is now <laughs> very in a very awkward position. So when you're in uh, the area just before you enter the wreck ship, there is uh, just a lot of just water in, in weird places th that you have to deal with now. So we can see some uh, route divergence right now. Dag is going back and cleaning up uh, some of these uh, items. Um, and uh, it looks like Rusty uh, uh, went um, uh, straight into wreck ship. So we're going to see our first rotated boss fight. <laughs> the room is a little bit teenier now <laughs> uh, because it's been rotated. <laughs> and you'll see Fantoon kind of do some interesting... Uh, the AI hasn't really changed. You'll see him kind of float in interesting ways just to, uh, around this room uh, because uh, because of how small it is now. <laughs> no X-ray to microwave. Uh, Daggett picking up gravity suit on the right here. Um... Back at, I don't know whether these are alpha or beta PBs. I, I never, I never really understood which ones were which. But yeah, that's a really, really good find. Um, I think Daggett made the smart move here uh, to go grab gravity um, or to go backtrack and check some items. Um, gravity is going to help a lot. Um, you know, this Fantoon fight is no joke uh, uh, with uh, in, in uh, rotation right now because you can you can see how little space you have uh, to maneuver now. Um, so um, doing it suitless is is. A, a challenge. And with that low of an energy because of how early in the game it is, that's that's going to take some serious skill to pull off. Yeah, these are very skilled players too, so I, I'm expecting <laughs> I'm expecting it to to be all right. But uh, yes, it's a <laughs> it's definitely a um, a hard fight. mentioned in the chat the extra tank from criteria power bombs might be helpful too ah nice yeah uh, uh judy also making the same decision and getting gravity um looks like uh judy has decided uh to check out some um uh, what looks like meridia locations here um this is i believe a watering hole we're going towards my head sideways is like yeah that's that, that that's what it looks like yep <laughs> it's a little hard to recognize him at first um rusty uh skillfully of course taking out fantoon uh Ooh. like i said not the easiest fight um three e-tanks no suit and a rotated room like that's 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 uh you know some skill right there <laughs> no kidding that is impressive we'll see how that pays off long run where the other two have the gravity oh, yeah. suit now Yeah, so I, I believe that is our first boss down of this uh, rotation rando. So now you can see that Daggett is going through uh, the area just before entering wreck ship and how the water is kind of awkwardly placed uh, around the area where you have to go and where you have to climb to get out of. So um, that's going to be interesting for Rusty to deal with. Uh, I'm sure he'll be able to get out. Uh, 
But uh, gravity would definitely help uh, in that situation. I, I believe space jump would also help, will also help too. So shouldn't be in too much trouble. But if you didn't have space jump, yeah, it would be it would be kind of difficult. So you know, casual logic uh, for the win here. Continues to enjoy the benefits of that really early screw attack get. That's uh, that is such a good power up to get this early in the game. It really is. Uh, screw attack is always welcome. All right. Uh, looking like Daggett is now going into his Fantoon fight. Um, so <laughs> should be pretty, hopefully pretty uh, safe, uh, even though he's only got one E-Tank here um, with a, a reserve. Uh, he does have gravity, so it should be uh, not as, not as uh, dangerous. Uh, looking over in the bottom left here, Juni uh, making uh, his way up the, uh, rather, uh, to the right in the sand pits here, these these shafts, which have now been turned into uh, nice platforms that you can simply run uh, from left to right on, <laughs> opens up some very interesting new uh, routing decisions. See our first Metroids as well. Yes, those those are the uh, the, the the false Metroids. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. On the way to, on the way to uh, Dragon. Now the, the Dragon fight is going to be pretty interesting. We're, we're going to see. Um, we have we're a see... reset up on Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, resets aren't um, too um, unusual. If you're going to a spot where uh, you've you've saved and you you're going to check a spot. Uh, instead of backtracking, uh, you can simply you know reset and reload where you were um, and skip that check. So in a randomizer, you often see uh, quite a few resets. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty smart play. And I actually didn't catch. Well. I didn't actually catch where he was when he reset. Uh, so I can't. I can't be sure <laughs> what happened. And the Daggett has finished Fantoon. I think uh, in the attic here on Rusty's screen is one of my uh, favorite spots uh, for enemy spawns. It, it just, uh, all the enemies are, are kind of in the air, all these flying enemies are in their air, and when you enter the room, they all just drop at max speed towards the floor. And so if, if you, if, whenever one of our players enters this, you'll see just like really quickly, just some flying pirates just whip right past you. Oh, and Varian. Right Ooh, ooh, that is good. Yeah, yeah, that is really good. I'm, I'm, of course, expecting Daggett to, to find his Varia um, suit uh, uh, pretty shortly as well. Fast take down Dragon there. See, two out of three of them have the grapple beam. Interesting sight on the big path there. Is the most iconic Samus right there. So now you can see what Rusty is having to do here to get out of the water. So a lot of um, a lot of these uh, uh, jump plus down grabs to get onto the ledges. Thankfully, again, as I have uh, said, the um, uh, water physics have been changed a little bit, so it is a little bit easier to get out of those um, out of the water. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how he handles the rest of the screen. Looks like he's gonna skip that E tank uh, in the um, what are called sky missiles. Uh, so uh, they probably won't need that extra health, um, but uh, yeah. E tank to get though. Uh, yeah, to answer your question, Victorus, um, the suits in this hack are not vanilla, they are balanced, so, um, uh, you know, just getting gravity is not going to protect you from heat, things like that. Uh, you need to have Varya in order to protect you from heat, damage to heated rooms. So, yes, they are, it, is, it is not vanilla, um, although I do believe that is an option. I'm not sure it's an option for the rotation randomizer at this time. Um, it's still very much in alpha slash beta stage, so... I'm sure the, there will be a link <laughs> for you to check out the actual rotation randomizer at some point. 
We've got the Chozo statue walking straight up. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's. It's actually quite, quite funny. Uh, how that managed, how they managed to do that with the Chozo statue. Juni choosing to skip a reserve and a power bomb pack over here in the sand pit. Uh, oh wow! And Rusty finding plasma on his way out here oh. of, of wreck ship. This is this is very good. Um, Daggett having gravity is going to be able to jump a uh, wall jump on the sky here on the right to get this sky item. Um, not sure if he's actually going to get it uh, because it is an E tank, so he might just decide to skip that as well. So noticed, I thought Iron Rusty skipped one of those power bomb packs and then just launched straight into it on the return trip smart play probably saved a bit a second or so on that by doing it that way uh yeah if you look over onto Junie's screen right here you see that that item that uh, Junie just passed uh that's uh traditionally uh known as the um main street item that item is one of the few items uh that you uh can only get um uh with speed booster, just like the the item at um, uh, in in Brinstar at uh, uh, oh gosh, just forgot the name of the room. But in any case, uh, yes, uh, that item is still locked by uh, speed booster. Um, you have to do a a, a speed ball in order to get that. It's it's a, actually pretty uh, a hard trick. Um, uh, at least for me, it is. Waterway, thank you, Waterway. I said it before, and it just <laughs> escaped my my mind. Uh, so here you see Rusty getting out of uh, out of moat, um, out of the water moat. Now, if he didn't have if he didn't have space jump, that would actually be a pretty hard uh, trick to to do. Um, it, it, high jump uh, and space jump, pretty much, kind of you want those if you're going to be going down the moat. Otherwise, you actually have to go through Avir rooms, kind of through um, the other entrance to Meridia wreck ship in the back. Um, uh, known as Forgotten Highway, and it's a pain without the suit. It really is a pain in rotation without the suit. This has been a blessed seed so far. I mean, I imagine they were really happy to get space jumps. Over. Oh yeah, for sure. Space jump just offers great mobility, so it's always welcome. And Iron Rusty picking up his gravity suit. I believe all of our runners now have uh, both suits. Daggett got that plasma beam. Daggett almost getting the Shine Spark <laughs> up the, the shaft here. I'm not sure he'd actually be able to um, land atop the shaft, so either way he would have had to fall and <laughs> reclimb this. Oh, that's right. Juni did not go to wreck ship yet, of course. He went to Marie first. So he did get gravity, but he did not get Varia, which is in the robot room. Uh, Again, the logic for this seed is not going to require uh, our runners to do um, uh, much in terms of heated rooms, and certainly not lower warfare without uh, Varia, so uh, uh, Juni does know that that's not going to be a requirement. Uh, Varia is going to be outside of uh, those areas. That's, that's actually a really good way to set it up. The stuff that doesn't require you to kill yourself in lava or acid to try to get to it to survive the lava or acid. Because, I mean, that, that's just not fair. I mean, I know I, that folks pull that off. I've seen... Well, we, we just watched a suitless run in which they spent a lot of time in lava and acid without that protection. But for a run like this where it's a race, that is try to pull up. Yes, Varia can be an upper Norfair. Um, I was specifically talking about lower Norfair. 
it it, do, it, it doesn't require you to do much heated rooms. Um, casual logic will only require you to do it only only might require some heated rooms in upper norfare. But in terms of lower norfare, you will not have to go to lower norfare with this logic in order to get Varian. You will not be there. Sand pit is interesting. See that he's still getting that uh, bit of a resistance. Oh, okay. Oh. Just saw that that boss fight. Juni has just rolled into, and this is gonna be a trippy one. So I was really looking forward to. I was I was hoping that Juni would get the uh, clip through that door. Um, if you do the moonfall correctly, you can actually clip right through that and just get the item. Uh, below Crade, I guess in this <laughs> in this case uh, and then climb back out and then fight Crade. really weird way to fight Crade. oh oh Crade's gone yeah all the boss fights boss fights are pretty amusing um uh, I would say Fantoon can be a little dangerous uh more dangerous uh, Dragon can be a little bit more dangerous. Crate is as simple as ever. Um, uh, and then the Ridley fight uh, coming up, uh, or w that will be coming up, um, is kind of trivialized in, in the rotation hack. So we'll we'll get to that uh, uh, when when our runners get to lower Norfair. So you can see uh, Juni having to do this uh, climbing, uh, falling, and then climbing again. Uh, one of the one of the strategies is if you have ice beam, uh, is to freeze the enemies, and so that you can actually jump off them closer to the door to get out of these these kind of rooms that have now been made into long vertical shafts. Well, taking Fantoon apart without the grapple beam. Uh, Dragon. A dra oh my god, yeah. Sorry, I'm on like 32 hours of no sleep, so uh, I might mix up a name or two. But yeah, Dragon. Yeah, the, the Dragon fight can be a little bit, um, depending on your item loadout, can be a little bit uh, harder uh, just because the mm, room is a little bit smaller, um, horizontally speaking, and you're kind of like on this little platform uh, next to these turrets that are shooting or going to try to electrocute you, so... Depending on your loadout, uh, it can be challenging. I, I'm not worried about these uh, runners. Um, uh, they've got quite a few items that are going to make this uh, fairly easy. And Rusty took down Moon early on with little health and lacking suits, I believe. So uh, this, this this should be. Oop! Yep, there we go. And he's gone. All right, looks like uh, Daggett is heading into his uh, Dragon fight. While we've got Juni uh, heading towards some, um, well, still exploring some Norfair, upper Norfair rooms. Looks like just exiting the high jump area. Quick dragon fight. Got the grapple beam. It's a shame we don't have charge and x ray, uh, so we can show off uh, what's called microwaving. <laughs> yeah. If you were here for the last run, yeah, yeah, if you were here for the last run, you actually saw quite a bit of the microwaving happening um, during like the Fantoon fight, uh, uh, the Metal Pirates, uh, things like that. Um, but it's always fun to see. All right, so yeah, on on Junie's screen over here, you're gonna see the Croc fight. Um, the, the Croc usually doesn't have a whole lot of uh, items in these randomizers. So there's usually not a lot of stuff gated behind Croc. Um, but what you're obviously noticing with the Croc fight is that, uh, hey, it is not rotated. Um, this is because Croc's room and the Croc AI uh, and the fight are kind of special. Uh, and it's it's just actually, it was just too difficult to actually rotate this room and still have it work. 
And so this is the only room, and I'm I'm hoping I'm right on that one, but I believe this is the only room in the entire hack that will not be rotated. One boss that was bad taking down. Like he he looked like he did not want that fight. He just wanted to chill. Well yeah, of course. Croc did nothing wrong. You just go in there and beat him up. And, and then melt him. It's it's pretty brutal. <laughs> this was probably one of the most metal like deaths in all of Super Nintendo. You 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 basically just melt this boss in acid. Uh, I, I would uh, pay attention to Juni's screen here. Juni's going to be uh, getting some of these items um, after Croc. Uh, one of the items that Juni's going to be uh, getting is uh, the item at the bottom of this shaft after Croc, um, just before what would normally be um, the grapple beam. Um, uh, there's some rooms with acid in them, and you'll see why <laughs> rotation... Uh, Kind of makes some of these rooms with acid lava a little bit more dangerous uh, depending on your your loadout trippy watch <laughs> I, I i love this whoever whoever's idea this was in the first place is a unique kind of genius <laughs> Would you say that they're genius, or are they man -man? Well, bad people. I mean, the line between those two is very thin. Yeah, yeah. if you're looking at that as a Venn diagram, it's just a It sounds like their mind might be a little tilted. Well, uh, I was proven wrong here. It looks like Juni is not going to be going all the way down the the croc shaft, <laughs> so you will not see that room. I am, I apologize. Very specific destination in mind. If if that room's getting bypassed. All right. Well, up on the top left here, uh, you're seeing Rusty uh, make his way to Crade. Um, I'm hoping that they. Can, I'm hoping one of these runners will actually pull off this Moonfall uh, clip through the door to Varia. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, just I I'm paying. I'm paying pretty close attention to that. Looks like. Uh, looks like. Um, no. Rusty's gonna fight it. Well, you still have to fight the boss. It's just oh, yeah. whether or not you can glitch your way through that that closed door. And I thought that was yeah, you skip the boss fight fight by going right through the door. Well, you do skip it initially, but then you climb back out and you still have to fight the boss. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that... yeah. It's just it's just fun. It's just fun. That way, it sets up the story of uh, the boss responding to your home invasion and robbery of his stuff. Yeah, these guys were just hanging out on Zevis and they weren't doing anything wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, just because Mother Brain and Ridley were up to no good doesn't mean that the rest of us, needed, the rest of them, needed to suffer for that. The real saving of the animals is when you don't kill Croc. I'm pretty sure none of those uh, none of those bosses can fit through any of the doors, so they're just stuck there anyways. How do the animals get out in uh, a flipped map? Uh, carefully through a hole in the wall. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, the 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 wall is still breakable <laughs> no 
noticeable lead in terms of just a pure amount of health. Uh, he's got a medical tool. Interesting seeing the results of the different paths that these folks have taken and what it means on their loadouts at this stage. Juni rocking two extra items here over what Iron Rusty has, being the grapple beam and the x-ray. There goes the sideways elevator. <laughs> yeah, so you can see on Juni's screen, uh, some, of these, some of these rooms now just have a, a whole mess of lava on 50% of the bottom of the room where that was not the case, you know, of course, in the vanilla hack. Um, that can become pretty dangerous in some rooms in the Lunar Affair, depending on your loadout, again. A lot of, I only just learned about from watching the run right before this one. Uh, spring ball jump being one of them when you when you switch it when you toggle it on in midair so that you can get that jump is yeah spring ball jumps are, are uh, pretty pretty neat um, and not too hard you really just have to toggle it on after you've jumped and morphed and but um, and press and hold the uh, the jump button when you toggle it on during the uh, the black screen transition um, and and uh, it's it's actually not not too difficult of a trick to get don't have the the uh, the space jump and the screw attack already, but I can't imagine we'll be seeing many spring ball jumps in this one where everybody's got uh, pretty much as much maneuverability as they can get. Yeah, you're not going to see any, any of those kind of advanced tricks uh, in this run. But he might do it. To I am wondering when Rusty is going to decide to go to uh, to wreck shit. Uh, I still believe he has not visited to get. Uh, Arya. He is going through Frogway. Uh, this has been altered so that you don't do not need the speed booster through those blocks. <laughs> but it was just a sliver of lava there. Really hard deciding on one of these folks to focus on at any given time because they are all playing one of my all time favorite games and it's flipped so it's extra enticing to watch. Maybe I was mistaken here. I, I must have missed, uh, <laughs> missed it. I, th I think Rusty does have Varya actually. He's, he's definitely in the heated room, so uh, he must have gotten Varya. So yeah, he's, he's pretty far ahead then. It's hard to keep track of three, three runners. Aha, but here we go. Here's a room that's just full of acid. <laughs> just it just ate more than uh, any tank. Uh, just just for that one little segment of being in that acid. Oh, I see chat. It was, it's it's Juni that doesn't have Varia. <laughs> my, my mistake. I think Daggett has both gravity and Varia at this point. Uh, he's going into his great fight. Uh, Juni, Juni does not have Varia, if, 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 if I understand that correctly. And Rusty is on his way to killing our, our lovable space dragon. Yeah, great to get mugged in his own home today. I think Juni is making the decision now to go to Rex Ship. <laughs> but probably a good call. I mean, those suits are definitely necessary. Yeah, Daggett, Daggett uh, in his uh, Drake, um, in his great fight pulled off a really nice, really clean fight there. And uh, having some difficulty jumping back up the shaft. The real boss of this game is the wall jumps, honestly. I thought the real boss of this game was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> that that too, that too. Fortunately, we screw attacked all of them, so.
bouncy spiky fellows are a unique obstacle in this. I don't know the names for most of these enemies. <laughs> so if you look onto Rusty's screen, uh, he's coming up to this area with what is known as the... Um, the metal pirates. Uh, the interesting thing about this room is that uh, when you uh, open the door here, you can actually open. If you're not careful, you can open the door underneath you and just fall right down the shaft. Uh, and so he is carefully not going to be moving and not shooting down or horizontally in any way. He's simply shooting up. Kind of a cool way to do that. You're just standing there, let it, let, letting the AI take itself out. Oh, yeah, yeah. They got fan tune coming. Yeah, the metal pirates um, only become vulnerable when they jump and dive at you. So you just kind of have to in, in this in this hack, you just have to let them uh, let them kind of jump, become vulnerable, and just shoot up. And they will they won't they won't hit you if you're standing right in the middle. They they just won't hit you. Um, but whatever you do, you don't want to open that door because you'll fall back down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see more acid rooms that Rusty is going through here in Lower North Air. If you're not careful, these will. These will uh, take out a lot of your health. Fall back. Fantoon's done. The Junie's screen there. Yeah, and now uh, Rusty's come up to uh, uh, a Ridley fight. Um, you will just see how trivial this fight actually is. Um, Ridley's AI kind of doesn't understand what to do in this kind of like short, long room as opposed to what's normally a tall. Uh, a narrow room and so Ridley is just kind of floating <laughs> off on the left uh, he dies down uh, below the, the ground and all you really have to do is just shoot some super missiles horizontally at him uh, until he blows up <laughs> and so the Ridley fight is pretty much a joke <laughs> that, that, was, that was amazing to watch so satisfying because Ridley is kind of a jerk in the entire franchise. Yes. Nice little bit of comeuppance. Yeah, Ru Rusty's gonna have to be a little careful. He's gonna, gonna have to go through uh, several acid rooms to get out of here. So, um, yeah, just uh, just got just gotta be a little careful. He's got a lot less E tanks than uh, than Daggett, uh, but the same amount as Juni. So, does not have arms flat there. A few more super missiles. All right, here's our last acid room, our last scary acid room uh, to go through, I think, and should be good at this point. Zipping around. <laughs> I imagine all three of these runners have extensive familiarity with the rotation run, even if it's not the specific seed for the randomizer. Like, they are... They are owning these stages. Oh yeah, these runners have a lot of experience with randomizers, with the vanilla game, uh, with just running hacks in general. Um, a lot of hacks will challenge your movement and your game knowledge. And so, yeah, these runners just have significant knowledge in those areas. Uh, there's just a, a lot of advanced tricks that they could be doing. And they're definitely not showing off all the advanced tricks that they can do, but uh, it, it definitely helps um, in, your, um, in, in running one of these kind of seeds. Now, from that through it continues to be a really, really good early game get. Yeah, you can just imagine how difficult some of these rooms would be without space jump or screw attack. Uh, like, imagine if you just had bombs for IBJing. Um, there's, there's definitely good, there would definitely be some uh, time spent doing a lot more difficult rooms. It looks like Junie is going to be coming up to Varia very shortly into one of my favorite rooms with the pirates just falling down. <laughs> about this some song about men and you know i think it was men are hailing hallelujah men are hailing i might be wrong i might be misremembering that one a little bit i think you're talking about raining pirates uh i think Junie's uh 
Probably kicking myself a little bit. Should should have gone direct ship early. <laughs> but that's okay. Not too far behind. Um, Rusty is definitely uh, leading the pack here. Um, that gets on his way through the uh, the uh, acid rooms here. Um, you'll notice that the runners actually went uh, through the, uh, Rusty and Daggett both went through the um, what would normally be the exit to Lower Norfair. Um, this is because, again, uh, due to a few changes in the hack, um, those blocks have been changed from crumbles to, I believe, powerball blocks. So you're able to get through um, those blocks uh, and get to Lower Norfair without having to go through um, Lava Dive or anything like that. It sounds like this whole hack has been really well thought out, this sort of thing. Like folks would just say, okay, yeah, let's flip it and call it a day. Well, yeah, just flipping, uh, you know, rotating it by 90 degrees, um, you're definitely going to have some issues with some of the vanilla uh, placements of blocks and terrain and things like that. So there are, like I said, there are a few changes. Daggett now making his way to the uh, metal pirate room. Uh, you would probably also see him do the same technique here of just standing and shooting up. I, given this setup, I can't even think of a way to take him down faster. I mean, I, technically, it uh, depends on your loadout, but like three supers would kill them. That oh, probably yeah. would be faster than what he's doing, but uh, this is definitely the easiest and safest way to do it. In, in a rotation rando, at least. Once again, Daggett coming into some more acid rooms. He's got significantly more E tanks, though, so I'm not predicting any problems here with Daggett's traversal through these acid rooms. Afford to take a swim or two at this stage. And we're going to see another laughably easy Ridley fight. We've got Iron Rusty taking a much needed top up on the health and supplies. He was looking pretty low there for a good chunk. The interesting thing about this Ridley fight, and hopefully it doesn't happen to anybody, <laughs> knock on wood, um, really can actually grab you and put you into the wall uh, or rather the floor if ridley does that you have to reset you are basically stuck in, in the floor i don't think there is a way out but ridley ridley can grab you and then just deposit you in the in the floor um <laughs> as, as per as per his ai and so i think the the, the runners are kind of making a, a pretty um you know, conscious effort to not like be in the path of Ridley grabbing them and just kind of being in that one center location where Ridley will just kind of dive around them. Um, so, yeah. That happen. Don't want to see that happen. No, you de you definitely do not want to see that happen. I feel like it'd be a funny thing to witness. Well, if you want to witness uh, funny things like that happening to our uh, to our runners, you can always follow them. Um, uh, just with the the bang R command, I'll show you the runners there. Uh, they've all got these channels. Um, that's Iron Rusty, Juni June, and the Daggett. Followed every single one of them. I've been making a point of following every runner and as many of the commentators as I can. At least the ones that I've seen. Obviously, if I'm like away doing stuff and I miss somebody's run, I. I can I can always look up the bots and follow them. Again. Yeah, definitely definitely follow these runners. Um, they're great runners if you like Super Metroid, if you like Super Metroid hacks. Uh, these guys just play these things all the time. Fantastic, chill folks to watch, and they do races of these every so often. So um, you'll get to see more of this fun rotation rando action. progress so yeah you'll see here on rusty's screen he's gonna try i think and gather these um all of these metroids up in one spot so that he can kill them 
all together um, be uh, before traversing back up this giant shaft. In the meantime, he is fighting time here because the acid is rising and will continue to rise to the top. <laughs> and he doesn't really want to be caught in that. So, um, yep, he's, he's, he's got the Metroids down and he is uh, going to open this door and then he's going to have to climb all the way back up again. Not the worst given the loadout he's got at this point. Another spot to collect some Metroids, I would imagine. Although not, oh, not so bad as having three of them on you at once, though. Somebody in the chat mentioned we need a sequel to the rotation hack that turns it in the other direction. <laughs> that would be pretty fun. Um, somebody get on that. Oh, and there is a clip right there. Okay, so Rusty did clip through that door. Uh, if you notice that, I kind of, I kind of, I, I, kinda pre I didn't, I didn't get to it in time, but uh, he did manage to do a moonfall through that door. He did not have to kill any of the Metroids. He just clipped right through that, that, uh, that door. That that normally, you'd have really to kill cool. the Metroids to get through. That was really cool. Somebody clipped that. Yeah, that's that's a, that's one of the fantastic tricks. You can do that in several places in this hack, and and it's it's really it's really fun to to witness. Juni uh, doing the Ridley fight. Uh, hopefully avoid getting grabbed and deposited in the floor. I'll laugh and then I'll feel really bad. Rusty uh, doing our our uh, baby uh, right now. The um, the baby skip. Uh, I I I've been told it's technically possible. But uh, extremely, probably extremely dis d difficult in the rotated uh, rando here. Uh, you would probably need task-like um, precision to actually do a baby skip. Um, uh, so I don't think there's anybody that's found like a setup just yet. I was yet. actually about to ask that, and you touched right on that. Was it, I was about to say, is the baby skip even possible in this setup? And you, you sucked the question right out of my brain. Well, uh, I'm sorry uh, for pre preempting your question. No, um, it was actually great because it's what I wanted to know. Perfect. Um, so yes, yes, technically I think possible, but nobody's found a human viable way I think to do this at this point in time. So uh, as Rusty comes up to the area with the Zebs, you'll notice that this is another uh, thing that's been changed in the rotation rando. The Zebs are no longer just uh, weak to these missiles. You can actually fire plasma shots at them to destroy them. Um, there is no Zeb skipping <laughs> in this. Uh, so yes, you, you you can you, you can destroy them with your beam weapon now. Um, just makes it just makes life a little bit easier. When, when Mother Grain gets cracked open, does she just flop out onto the... Nope, nope. Gravity doesn't kick in. No, no, no. She's held in there real tight. All those wires and stuff. All right. We got Mother Brain happening while Daggett is refilling and on his way to Turian. And Juni uh, is coming out of... Lower Norfair shouldn't be too long before Juni also follows Daggett into Turing. Brain blew my mind first played this. Yeah, I think this was like one of like the one of those surprise fights where if you had played the first Metroid game. You know, you beat Mother Brain in a jar, and then the timer started, and you ran out. And then, you know, you go and play this game, and you're kind of expecting the same thing. And all of a sudden, oh no, there's another phase. And you know, you get that kind of, <laughs> you get that kind of just, I don't know, dread, dread. You know, feeling dread. You're just like, oh, what, what's going on in here now? <laughs> Made for I love the rainbow beam. It looks so cool. Daggett attempting to do a moonfall through this as well. Oh, uh, health looking didn't... pretty right now. Yeah. I, I, Daggett didn't quite make it through. I, I I don't know if you can make it through that door with a moonfall, glitch that door with a moonfall, but um, he did do a moonfall nonetheless.
dad watching what happens to the baby here. But uh, I guess we still got to see that a couple more times today. <laughs> I always loved the, the triumph, like the music that kicks in for this this scene and the scene that follows it, though. Oh yeah, the music in this game is fantastic. Uh, everything about this game is really fantastic. Definitely, uh, at least in my opinion, one of the top uh, ten or if not top five games for the Super Nintendo. Easily, easily top five for me, and it is my personal favorite Metroid franchise entry. I, I feel like it had the best music in the entire franchise, and that franchise had yeah, for sure. All right, well, we've got baby. Baby's dead now. <laughs> Rip baby. F, F in chat for baby. Gone but not forgotten. And uh, we're rainbow beaming. Oh, uh, yeah. Mother brain here, and uh, and uh, we'll see. I, I don't know. If it was, was there a save or kill animals incentive for this? I, I actually don't, uh, don't know. This one didn't have it flagged. I'd love to see them save the animals, though, but obviously... I mean, this is this is their play here, and uh, let me just take a quick look. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't have the Saber Kill the flag on it, though. That might be up to runner's choice then. Uh, yeah. I do know some of these runners like to save the animals, so we might see. We might answer your question about how the animals actually get saved. All right, Daggett clipping have... through that, that door shell. That was the second clip. Um, uh, moonfall clip to that door shell. Excellent. Not slash. The 342 Super Metroid that we saw prior to this and the Super Duper Metroid both have save slash kill the animals. So yeah, runner's choice here. You love to see it though. Some of these rooms can be very frustrating. The room that Daggett was just in with that hopper, the hopper, I, I know it can be killed with like a ton of like supers or something, but um, you know, you usually just want to get through that room really quickly and that hopper just kind of blocks your path. <laughs> and some of these rooms are really hard to get up, especially if you don't have like high jump or space jump, which is why uh, I, I believe the logic makes it so those are required. Uh, in, in some of these instances. Uh, otherwise, you have to do kind of like worse than room in the game, like pixel perfect, frame perfect, like wall jumps to get up the, those those shafts. Once again, Daggett uh, showing us that the baby uh, is, is not being skipped. All right. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Rusty has uh, won our race. Incredible. And I believe that was an hour five uh, and 29 seconds. So yeah, GG to Rusty. Well played. Definitely made some really great riding decisions there. Daggett on his heels though. Yeah, Daggett is looking really solid, especially in the health department. Like, Daggett could afford to make sloppy mistakes that I don't expect he's gonna make based on the skill that I've seen. But he's got some nice wiggle room on stuff. All right, once again, we're coming up to the Zeb room. Uh, again, we can destroy these Zebs. That's a change that's been made to the hack. Better. This would be so much trickier if you couldn't do it like that with it uh, with it being oriented like this. Daggett demonstrating why wall jumps really are the final boss of this game. We are joined here by Rusty. Hey Rusty, uh, GG. Incredible run. Muted. They do still seem to be muted all the time. That was fun. There we go. Hello. Watch. Hi, Rusty. Oh, yeah, GG on the run. G -G. That was that was really great. Really well executed. Um, fun to watch. Um, any anything that surprised you in this uh in this rando run? Um, it was. It was pretty wild um, that Junie and I had raced one earlier 
this week where the fire was in that exact same spot and neither of us went there to get it. So <laughs> uh, we, we noticed. <laughs> oh, so bad. I think I think Junie is going to be kicking himself after this. Uh, if, if you're if you're tuned in and watching, um, Junie Junie right now is just coming through Torian. Uh, decided not to go direct ship early and uh, got that Varya suit pretty late. So <laughs> I'm wondering how how that's gonna how he's gonna think about that when, uh, when we're all done with this, this race. What a wild ride! Yeah, it, it, it was uh, kind of a shaky like go mode because just I didn't have ice, I didn't have charge, and I was kind of calculating my yeah. ammo. You probably saw me pause a couple extra times because I was looking at the ammo counts to see if like what I was looking at. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw, I, I was uh, kind of hoping for Ice Beam because it would have been able to show off some of the interesting things you can do with enemies uh, climbing, freezing enemies and getting through um, you know, doors without having to like jump a lot. <laughs> Um, but, uh, alas, Ice Beam was uh, not on the menu for this race. Looks like Dag is going to avoid the horse crouch here, which is a trick I also only just learned about from the previous run. Yeah, this is this is uh, called stand-up glitch. Um, basically, you can manipulate your health such that uh, Mother Brain will... Um, uh, well, the, ba the baby uh, sequence will start... Uh, while well, you're actually still able to walk around. You have to be off the ground when that happens, um, when the actual sequence happens, otherwise you will get stuck to the ground. But uh, but if you're off the ground while that happens, you can um, you can just avoid you know, being stuck in that crash position. And, uh, if you have charge and like a, a, a beam weapon, you can start putting charge shots into Mother Brain while the, the sequence is actually going. Um, right now, Daggett does not, so he does not have a charge, so he basically did stand-up glitch just to show it off. Yeah, that's a... Uh, oh, that, that almost looked like he might have had a hard lock. Happen. Yeah. Well, I'm glad they pulled out of that, because he is definitely getting second place here unless something breaks. Yeah, uh, the, the thing about Sam Glitch is that there is possibilities of basically hard luck in our game. Um, and so, <laughs> Daggett doing stand up glitch without, um, you know, actually needing to do it or it being any beneficial was, was for show. Um, and it <laughs> looked very, very close to being a, a, a bad time. Uh, but what is a good time is a $10 donation that we received from Level Up Leo saying, This is me gaming, please rotate yourself 90 degrees as well and get some sleep after you're done. And that's 10 yes. more dollars towards Ray for Ghostbuster 2. Oh uh, yeah, that is definitely the plan. I am feeling what is, uh, like what, 33 hours of no sleep not counting that one hour nap i picked up after i was done my hosting duties but, uh, it's it's a marathon i planned for this i took a good chunk of days off work i bought all kinds of caffeinated goodies like i got this is this is a big day up late for video games thing Plus for a good cause too, which is actually a big driving factor and is what's keeping me upright right now. Daggett going through the track field right now. You remember the name. <laughs> yeah, I love I love that name. I'm never gonna not remember the name for that one. Uh is so... gonna save the animal. I, yes, he is definitely. If I know Daggett, yeah, and here he goes. He is definitely yeah. saying <laughs> You love to see it. And there you go. Shoot the wall to the right, and the animals still get to escape. <laughs> it, I'm personally a fan even, of saving the frames. It didn't even make a hole in the wall. <laughs> I know. The animals, uh, they can just phase through walls. Uh, you, you didn't know that? <laughs> no, you know, you soften the wall up. All right, and GG to Daggett. Uh, that is a 1-12-12. Uh, just uh, about, what, seven minutes after. So, yeah, not, not bad. Not bad for a rando. Oh, 
my god, somebody actually has, um, Twitch emotes for the animals. Following Blue Plasma Spark. Alright, that's who they are from. Well, you're getting a follow. Then we have Junie kicking the crap out of Mother Brain. And we are joined here by Daggett. Uh, GG Daggett. Uh, excellent, excellent race. Um, a lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun on some, where those, some of those item placements were. What did you think about where Vario was? Is that mute? Hey, you do seem to be muted. Daggett is muted. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, well, I, I forgot. Where, where was Varia? I know it was somewhere oh, annoying. The robot room in Wreck Ship. In yeah. the attic. Yeah, that was, um... I was not expecting that, but I am glad I went to Wreck Ship. Appreciate you saving the animals. I was really rooting for somebody to do that on this race. I, uh, I, I pretty much always do, but he, these two don't. Well, I couldn't pass up the chance to beat Junie. But if I'm the last one off the planet, I'll definitely save the animals. Right. Yeah, that was the other thing, was I, I looked over when I was somewhere in Turian and saw that you had finished, and I was like, damn it. I think maybe when I got to the G4 room is when I noticed. Yeah, I believe I believe you were just on your way through um, the Metroid rooms when you did that. But yeah, it was it was pretty close. Um, I think uh, you stopped off for some more E tanks um, and a few more items than Rusty ultimately did. But the interesting part was you guys pretty much mirrored each other's uh, routes fairly fairly uh, closely. Um, so. Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting to, to watch. Yeah, I was I was really worried about ammo. I didn't really need to pick up that many E tanks, and some of them I grabbed on accident. <laughs> I jumped and jumped too high and, and touched them. That sort of thing. Yeah, I, I believe like for example, um, Rusty skipped uh, Sky Missile E tank, but uh, you ended up uh, going for it. So yeah, that was. In in hindsight, that was dumb. Uh, at the time, <laughs> I was like, oh, this might be useful. I don't have six tanks yet. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think the difference there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, just item pickups at this point. Um, Junie unfortunately decided not to go to wreck ship early. You guys did, and and missed out on Varia for a while. So uh, that that was a that was that was a, a, a little bit of a routing uh, mistake, but um, still a uh, really entertaining race uh, to watch all of you guys play. Yeah, I really wish I could have found charge because that would have cut down on the item checks. I, I was going to say, I was very scared. Uh, I was explaining stand-up glitch. Uh, you were the only one who decided to do it, even though you didn't have charge. And um, and then at the very end of that, I saw some <laughs> some some bad some bad sprites. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and thought to myself, oh no, <laughs> did he just meme his way into a hard lock? <laughs> yeah, apparently. So if, if you have the normal beam on uh, and you're firing at that time, it's fine. But apparently with grapple, it, uh, it's not fine. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing that scared me a little bit too was uh, because you didn't have x-ray. X-ray is one of the things that can uh, get you out of uh, being locked under the ground in a bad position. I was kind of scared something might happen and you just would end up soft locking in that case. Oh, I, I, I'm a professional. No, of, of course, of course. I, I, I shouldn't have been worried. Junie really just rolled right through that track and field segment. He did. Yeah, he's really good at that. All right, and GG to Chuni. Uh, nice. 116.45, I believe, was the final time on that one. So, yeah, uh, great, great, uh, great race uh, between all three of you guys. Um, Daggett with a 59% item, Rossi with a 55% item pickup. Um, we'll see uh, Junie's uh, results at the end here. But yeah, that was pretty much, uh, pretty much a 10-minute uh, spread between uh, first. Uh, 
uh, first and third here. So yeah, pretty yeah, pretty tight race almost actually. Almost forty five minutes under the estimate as well, which is really impressive. Yeah, I yeah. I think partly because as as we got closer to the marathon, we all put in more hours practicing and improved a lot. But yeah, also I, in some in some seeds gravity and high jump will be on wrecked ship and you'll check everywhere in the game except wrecked ship to be certain that you're not gonna uh, get soft locked or something when you go to wrecked ship yeah i believe rusty you did not go and get gravity before wrecked ship and i was a little bit worried but i i do realize that you had high jump and space jump so i wasn't too too worried but i was explaining how that could be precarious if you don't have like the loadout you need to get out of those water sections true so many times junie has um just just gung-hoed it toward lore and warfare at the beginning of these seeds and rather than finding everything that he needs he just thinks oh, i'll i'll find enough as i go and he's and it has paid off for him so many times um and then some of us are like well i'd like to you know clean out the beginning of the game before doing that and seeing if it would help so in this case i i mean i don't know how far he went toward norfair <laughs> but he has done that a lot of times it has paid off for him too many times uh, apparently not this time, <laughs> not you, this you, time. You, snu you snuck this one out can we get Junie in here as well I'd love to hear his thoughts on this whole thing we someone in chat to, uh... says got enough time left for another one <laughs> almost well if Junie's uh willing he just needs to join up onto the waiting room if, if you're listening in and we'll let you in i'm glad i got to show off one of my favorite moves with this um hack is to do a screw fall get through the wasteland blocks if you can line it up correctly and just fl fly right out of that room that was i'm really happy i got that one for you guys <laughs> Yeah, I was excited to see uh, also the moonfall clipping through the door shells. Um, I was hoping to see it in in the in the crate um, room to clip right through those, uh, but I was really glad to see it in Turian. So, yeah, yeah everybody I, I, everybody did that. I goofed up and had wave and accidentally opened the door and was like, "Well, I'm not moonfalling here." I figured out one this week, um, falling through the pink hallway in the Brin Star, but I. I pressed up too early and like stopped myself on the last block. Otherwise, I would have been like moonfalling through that door too with Screwfall. Yeah, I think we noticed that you canceled the moonfall with an up press. <laughs> uh, it, was too, it was too early. Yeah, I, would, I mean that one messes up the graphics, so it's it would have just been um, funny. But <laughs> Juni, we're now joined run. by Juni June. Hello. Yeah. The G -G. last one in. <laughs> G -G. Still, still, you're like four. What? Forty-two minutes under the estimate. That is very impressive. Yeah, I mean, these have been taking us right around an hour, usually. We, we, we put in that estimate when we were kind of just starting these, and they were taking us a little bit longer. So average, I, I don't know, I would say between an hour and an hour and a half for sure. Yeah, I feel, I feel like the, the one teens, like around 115, is pretty pretty typical time. Yeah. So how soon did you guys go up to wreck ship? First. Immediately. <laughs> I, I was about to ask. I was about to ask. I'm so sorry, Junie. I was watching the whole time going, oh, no. <laughs> Just check wreck ship. Oh, I hate the wreck ship. I will never go up there. Never, 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 never. Um, Junie, I was telling him so many times it's paid off where you just go toward Norfair. And I, I, I was, uh, as I was picking up that Vary, I was like, I wonder if Junie just is, you know, doing the exact same thing or if he went the wrong way. Oh, yeah, definitely went the wrong way. I, I cleared so much of the game. I pretty much cleared everything I could. Um, I still had Ooh. Spring Ball and Plasma left. But otherwise, I think everything, everything that, where Varya could be, I had checked before going to Rex Shep. I was kind of similar looking for charge and supers, but maybe not as many locations. Did you end up finding charge? No. I wish I had. Did you, Rusty? No. Oh, I wonder where it was. Probably in Lower Norfair. In the, Who knows? <laughs> the, the attic where no, nobody ever goes. Yeah. Oh, because you, you cleared the rest of the game. Oh, jeez. 
I sure did. I sure did. Yeah. So the only things that I didn't see, I didn't see um, the rest of the wrecked ship. I didn't see the, you know, the top of Lower Norfair. Um, and then I skipped Plasma and Spring Ball. I kind of decided if Varya was in one of those two places, then, you know, so be it. But so be it anyway, I guess. Yeah, I I felt like overall that the seed wasn't too bad though because it it gave us so many mobility items really early on. Yeah, that um, yeah, we that early that. screw too was really nice. Yeah, early screw the early space jump <laughs> like just getting that combo as early as you did. Yeah, the thing about it is stuff like that. Um, like when you get a lot of items that can get you to a lot of places easily, it just opens up more of the game and makes it yeah. harder to know where to go. Like it doesn't really guide you logically. Yeah, it's it's true because um, when so I went reverse meme route out of Big Pink and then decided to check like Old Mother Brain and um, track and field supers, you know, like all that stuff. And that put me back at the ship. And so then I was like, well, I should check your power bombs. And then I was like, okay, I don't have gravity, but should I go to wreck ship? Because like I could probably get out if I had to without, you know, get out suitless. Yeah. Um, I was really torn. And then I was like, oh, I better play it safe and go down to Norfair and decided to check um uh what is it beta power bombs yeah beta said the gravity <laughs> <laughs> yeah and there was gravity and i was like nope go back to fan two now <laughs> yeah oh, that, okay that was I, I i realized that uh you had gone the safe route and then immediately after finding gravity i was like yep gotta turn around and just do fan two now <laughs> um yeah i i did gravity and i was low health because i'd gone to uh criteria power bomb so i did a safety save because fan two I feel like I've gotten a lot better, but occasionally Fantoon really uh, catches me by surprise. Yeah, so I, I was I was saying that Fantoon can be a little bit more of a difficult fight in the rotation random because the size of the room is, well, the size of the bottom of the room is significantly smaller and, and Fantoon can basically kind of box you in a bit. So the Fantoon fight, I think, is, is a little bit uh, harder. And then I kind of <laughs> was showing, or I kind of, uh, you guys demonstrated very well about how uh, the Ridley fight is just laughably easy now. Uh, the only <laughs> yeah. thing you have to avoid is just don't get grabbed and deposited in the floor. And you're right. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that worked out. Yeah, Ridley's yeah. fun in this. Yeah. I wanted to I want to see that happen, but I really didn't want to see that happen to any of you. <laughs> I'm sure Daggett has a clip somewhere. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Dragon is the fight that I feel like is the most dangerous until you get used to it. Like I've done it enough now that like it's pretty easy. I didn't have like a great fight this time, but like I don't know. There, there's it. It's it's a whole brand new fight compared to vanilla. I feel like. It, it, now remind me: is Dragon uh, still grappleable? Like uh, grapple kill? Um, can yeah. you angle down to get those uh, turrets? So yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I was. I think we were a little surprised. Uh, nobody uh, after getting grapple fairly early. Uh, nobody actually grapple killed Dragon. <laughs> I guess I didn't have grapple. Yeah, uh, yeah I must have missed that. I grapple killed her. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I thought I, I saw a grapple kill. I must have missed yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I, I had grapple, but uh, I don't know. I, I try not to get grabbed in that fight. Plus, I had screw, and I think I got gooped in, and, you know, you you jump, and it's, she she runs away. Well, it was a great race uh, overall. And uh, I'm really glad you guys submitted this run, and I'm really glad I got to commentate it. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Nuke, uh, for um, yeah, co-hosting with me here and uh, lot of doing this commentary. Watch. Yeah, it's been it's been great. It's been great. A lot of fun. Um, yeah, thanks so much for the commentary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we had some last minute, last minute subs on the commentary, and Squid graciously uh, offered to to jump in. Squid, Squid's extensive knowledge of this whole randomizer and hack setup really helped the commentary a lot. It would have just been me talking about how much I love Super Metroid, but know nothing <laughs> about this ROM hack. Well, you should go play this. Everybody, go play this. I am this going now. to. I am 100% going to. It looks so I, fun. I put instructions in chat for yeah. how folks can um, generate their own 
uh, rotation randos. Uh, I told them all they'd be experts in wall jumping by the time they were done. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. You uh, might want to but do I... the vanilla version once or twice before you do the rando. Just, <laughs> just not to, to to not throw yourself too far into the deep end. And on that note, I am going to have to say that we are going to get ready to move on to the next uh, to the m- next game, which is going to be a uh, Zelda uh, Ocarina of, of Time randomizer. So from one randomizer to another. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Thanks for all the runners. And we will be back in just a moment. Yeah, thank you.